Good afternoon from Jacksonville, where the Maryland Terrapins fall to the LSU Bengal Tigers, 69-67. Uh, as usual, we end the season in a hallway in an arena someplace, and, and today it's Jacksonville. I'm Wayne Viner. This is Bruce Posner, and you're listening to the Viner Four Gates postgame show. Bruce, what'd you take from that brutal loss today? If I wasn't 68 years old, I would cry because it's not much, you can't pit in on anything. Obviously, I lost my voice. Uh, Sticks played great. I don't know why he was so upset afterwards. I mean, he played phenomenal. Uh, I think he thought maybe he should block the shot or he missed a couple free throws. And up by three with the ball and a three-point shot. Eric Adelaide misses him mm -hmm. and Shazier makes his. tie game right. look I mean you got to hand it to sticks he makes the three out of the corner to tie the game <laughs> it was huge it was uh, huge he was great w what that that comeback Maryland looked god awful for a while they were stuck on 15 points it seemed like for most of the first half behind us you won't be able to hear the crowd at Kentucky's playing against Wofford and uh, somebody's still having fun, but there's no joy in Mudville. So no, it's not, and it's so really sad because here we had a shot to go home to the Sweet 16 in D.C., which is like a third home or a second home right. to Maryland, and uh, opportunity to get another shot at probably Michigan State and maybe Duke. And right. that's the one I wanted. I wanted. It's to out the it's out the window now, and it was just a shame because they had the game in their grasp. After just a horrendous first half, right. the horrendous shooting. I, mean, I was on the floor. You were in media row. You kept saying that the statistics, the statistics were so bad for a while. At some point, at the beginning of the second half, the Terps were 11 for, for 41. Turgeon got the technical, went to the zone. That zone was big. The entire game changed. I asked him afterwards, all right, about playing the zone in the future. Mm -hmm. And he would, you know, he really wasn't thinking straight because he was so upset. Sure. He was devastated, as you ex you'd expect. And we have him in the hallway talking to the media here. And right. You can look on Terp Talk and see that. Maryland finishes 21 of 63 from the floor, 9 of 28 beyond the arc. There's a perception for a while that LSU played better. They end up 24 for 65, 7 of 24. Probably a difference in the game from the stripe. Maryland 16 of 23. And LSU, 14 of 16. If that game, to me, if that game went on two more minutes, three more minutes, Maryland's winning the game. Maryland had the momentum, but it is what it is. That's That was it. Yeah, the final play was tremendous play by Tremont. What's his uh, last name? Uh, Waters? Tremont Waters. Yes. Right, Tremont. Just a great play. It was drawn up for him. was the scrum at the end of the court. Mm -hmm. We were up by two, and it looked like there were 11 fouls, and they never called one. And look, they didn't call much against either team, but you know what else got me, Wayne? Uh, How many balls went in and out or hung on the rim? Yeah, that, that's what Turgeon talked about, is that oh. it just did not seem to be our day. going to be back and talk about uh, final thoughts for the season, what the future holds. After these commercial messages, we'd like to thank, as always, as we wrap up basketball here, we'd like to thank Meyer Consulting Engineers of Rockville, Viner Four Gates Consulting, Nonprofit Services, and all of you folks who watch our postgame shows. We'll be back in Jacksonville in a moment. Turp Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. Call Viner Four Gates for all of your IT needs. In the D.C. Baltimore area, you could reach us at 301-251-2900 or on the web at www.vinerforgates.com.
back here in Jacksonville. Of course, you hear Bruce on the radio, often 1300 CBS Sports Radio, but we're ready for one of those Bruce Posner famous wrap-up rants. Uh, what'd you make of this today? I thought Coach and coached a very, very good game. It seemed like the better team won the game, but the better coach kept us in the game. He had to keep trying and keep imploring his team. I thought today he did a good job, and we just fell victim to a made shot and a missed shot. It's basketball. But here are my final thoughts for the season. We're heartbroken. A bit. Made it to the final 32. I think the goal was a sweet 16. Yes, I it was. fell two points short. 13 and 7 in the conference, we both agree, was a tremendous achievement, all right, with the team. And I don't want to say this young, because they're not young well, anymore. You know, I asked him yesterday, and he said, no, oh, Wayne, they're not really young anymore. I just say that, right. being a turgeon. So uh, and he might have been a little sarcastic, but because uh, he mentioned it again tonight. But that's not the point. They're not young anymore. I thought Sticks' last three games of the year was special. He hit that three tonight. Wayne, you're down by three. If he misses, the game's over. Right. He made it. It means a lot to me. I know he missed a couple free throws. You don't make every shot. You don't you make every don't. shot. Mike. Well, Jordan. So LeBron now James, you don't make every shot. I got one more before you go shoot. forward. You spent most of the game at uh, the club level. Right. You came down for the final seconds. What's the difference in intensity moving from the club level to actually sitting on the hardwood? Yeah, it's, it's well, to me, I'm living and dying up there and broke every press box rule there probably was. Uh -huh. You know, but the, there were so many people up there. Right. And then the Kentucky fans came. You couldn't even see. Right. They were all walking back and forth. But on the floor, I came down to watch the final couple minutes with uh, Sobel. Right. Sticks it to three, great pass by Cowens. And then I said, well, I'm gonna spend the last few seconds with my man, Wayne. Yeah. So we were literally on the floor, yeah. both had our hearts broken. Yeah. But uh, such a different perspective sitting on the actual court. We were in the photo booth at the back. Yeah, but as, a, as it's you hard know, to see a little bit. But. We're pressed, but we're really fans. Yeah. And as a fan, it doesn't matter if you're sitting in the last row in the upper That's deck. our next thing after we put this show together taking Bruce to the airport and I'm driving home with all the camera equipment and your good friends Bucky and, and uh, uh, Jim and Jim, Jim great yeah. guys we had a lot of fun this morning right all right so for next year next year I'm very happy you not look forward to it mm -hmm. please sticks come back I yeah. mean you don't know what's gonna happen after yeah. a loss like this he could say you know what but you're pretty confident he's coming back I'm pretty confident he's coming back he was great what a great kid he was so emotional, I felt horrible for him. Right. And but here's that, that picture right here on the screen, right. him and Bruno walking off the court. Yeah, Bruno had to console him. Sticks was besides himself. You know what I mean? I, I like it that somebody takes us that seriously. He took it that seriously. If I was playing and that was me, I would have been crying too. It's just tough to see a guy that big crying and... Yeah. Uh, the muscles that he's put on in the past few weeks. You gotta love wow. him, man. You gotta love Morsell. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Cowan will be back, and I do know one thing. I'm going to leave it with this. Twelve years ago, I had Lefty Grizzell on my show, and I said, Lefty, if you were coaching today, what would you be looking for in a player? He said, well, i got to have a couple bigs, but other than that, I want everybody on my team to be able to nail the three-point shot, and I would search the country to find these guys if if maybe that's a, a message maybe it's not Wiggins certainly fills that role Wiggins did a good job right? with that but if I was Mark Turgeon all right with the twins coming in and having sticks coming back uh, and uh, Scott from Philadelphia right next year all I would look for would be the guys like Lindler and the guy who hit 500 threes for Wolford yep. You know, you see what those guys right. can I mean, do for Dil a team. Dylan Windler was a revelation to see him in person for Belmont. Without he was question. Gordon Haywood the second. And just think, and I'm not saying if you had a shooter like Herter on this team. Y yes, you did at one point. I, you did, but that was last year. They should have fed him the ball. Well, 
they did, more. but you know, you didn't have sticks, you didn't yeah. have other ingredients. Mm -hmm. But I think the need for dead eye three point shooters has to even go to the bench. It has to be deep. All right, as long as you've got that big guy. I thought Bruno was great tonight. He got yeah. slaughtered again. Another double double. Does he ever not get a double double? And it didn't look like he was going to make it, but he got there. He always makes it somehow right. or another. But well. you know what? You got to love this team. And uh, the last thing I got to say, one hour the Terps play Carolina and lacrosse. My focus leaves here, yep. goes to lacrosse, stay undefeated outside. Yeah. We'll take it from there. What are your final thoughts, Wayne? Well, I think we'll do this on the radio again. The Kentucky fans seem to like what you had to say. They're going crazy. Um, the team grew up a lot. I know they didn't win a lot of those games, but in talking with Turgeon, there goes Johnny Holiday. In talking with Turgeon and being in the locker room the past few days, which is something we don't do in College Park, you got a sense that these kids actually figured out what they were after and that, and that they were really starting to buy in at the and level that quit. you need. They never quit no. today. And they could have. Absolutely. And I thought that about the other game, the Belmont game. Right. They, they could have walked out. And I said that in the post-game show. That could have been it, but it wasn't. How today. do you work on coming out, not coming out so slow? I had somebody said they should play pickup games in the parking lot and then come in and keep playing. I don't understand it. Well, we'll deal with all of those issues and some lacrosse stuff. Catch us on 1300 CBS Sports Radio. And, of course, the Young Terps podcast is going to have a wrap-up show either tonight or tomorrow. Probably be tomorrow once so we can get Bruce and myself on the air with Mason and Jordan. Uh, I tell all my friends out there who are watching, don't call me because I'm not talking for 48 hours. Text yeah. me. I'll answer anybody. Mm. I'll speak to you that way. But my voice is down for 48 yes. hours now. Yes, it is. Because it's gone right now. All right. Thanks for watching. Wayne, thanks for all your great work. Yeah. And uh, Wouldn't happen without you. We, I mean, had so much, we had so much fun today. You yeah. can't even describe it. Yeah, it Until. Good. Until. Still Heartbreak. a great game. When I had to listen to that locker room, the LSU locker room, doing yeah. the press conference. Yeah. Brought me back to some of those natty losses in lacrosse. And we'll, we'll talk about all of this and more later. But for today, good afternoon. I would drop the mic, we'll be to buy another one. Yeah, good afternoon from Jacksonville.